Hello, Dolphiliacs. And Disney Dust Collectors. And so it is late night on October 31st, Halloween. It is Halloween. <laughs> Um, and we have a spooky season. Nightmare Before Christmas. Cool. Dwellings. We Plus have Corpse a, Bride. Plus Little Corpse Bride. Just, <laughs> She's making a know, cameo. I just wanted to give her her moment. <laughs> Emily needs her moment. Guest <laughs> appearance. But yeah, we uh, want to run through a few of these bags that we got. Um, I there, We have a hat. I'm also wearing this awesome Sally um, shirt. And I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, and the gym shore. And we have an awesome gym shore. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a very, very special gym shore. So, yeah, we just want to go ahead and kind of launch into it and run through these bags. And yeah. We're off to a good start. <laughs> all right so for starters we have anthony's shirt which is sally in this adorable like bathing suit version of her dress so cute it's so cute and it says such a doll up here at the very top perfect for this <laughs> yes and now we need to make a custom sally doll which is her in beach attire Aww. and some cute retro stuff that's one thing that I love about this collection that Box Lunch started putting out since the summer that we've been collecting is just they're making it kind of like um, a vacation for um, the Nightmare Before Christmas characters and they're, you know, they're doing summer things this time. But look, and then I also got this hat, which is awesome. It's this beautiful like forest hunter green. And then we have Jack Skellington's skeleton head <laughs> right here with cacti growing out of it and just like various desert flora it's so cool i love the fact that they've been doing this and making these kind of desert and tropical beachy vibe nightmare um, before christmas apparel yeah yeah it's, it's just so cool and innovative and just really speaks to my heart because i love nightmare before christmas and i love floral i love fantasy I love desert <laughs> aesthetic um, anything, really. But yeah, so this is my shirt and hat together. It's a cute little ensemble. Um, but yeah, like I said, these um, aesthetics are right up my alley. I love what they're doing with Nightmare Before Christmas here. And yeah, I think they actually kind of go together too. I'm living for this like kind of light lavender with the dark green. We'll start with this bag that we've actually been using quite a lot. It's a canvas bag and it's a lot bigger than many lounge flies. It holds a lot more as you can see, but it's super adorable and awesome. And it really is exemplary in showing this really beach vibe aesthetic that Box Lunch has been giving with um, their partnership with Loungefly for this Nightmare Before Christmas merchandise. I'm absolutely in love with it, as I already mentioned. But here we have them in this, like, old-style car. And then they have bikes above. Like, they're going to do some, like, leisure activities um, when they get to their vacation destination. And then we do have, of course, the spiral mountain in the background with some silhouettes of the moon and bats behind. But it's this beautiful grayish cobalt blue color, which is all over the bag. It's on the front um, lid, the front flap. And then we do have zero right here on the top of the car as kind of like the car ornament with the little pumpkin nose. So many awesome details. And then what I really love is just all the beautiful floral work that they have in the design adorning various places on the bag. And then look at this print. It is beautiful, beautiful. Now I love the fact that they have the, all these different pinks um, that really go so well with that rich uh, deep cobalt blue. But then we have the silhouettes of the bats in 
um, another pink shade. And it's so awesome. It just gives a beautiful floral haunting effect. And it's very unique. It's not something that I ever thought we'd get from uh, Nightmare Before Christmas merchandise, but it's all throughout inside the bag. Beautiful, beautiful. Me and Ray have been using this everywhere. As you can see, there is a protein bar in here. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, but it does have, it is corded around the top so that you can make it little if you wish. But I know one of Raymond's favorite features of this bag is this pocket right here. It's beautiful. Again, in a deep cobalt, we have the actual lounge fly plaque that says Disney Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas. I love the silver hardware that they have with it. And yeah, it opens up with magnets so you don't have to undo these buckles each time. Pretty good pocket. Faux leather at the bottom. And yeah, it's an awesome bag, great to use. I definitely, we definitely recommend it. We still have the tag on it, even though we've been using it. Yes. What say you? I think it is really pretty. I do love the floral pattern on it with the colors that they've chosen. I think it's kind of funny how they have locks, lock, shock, and barrel as like Jack and Sally's unofficial adopted children in this. Yeah. <laughs> It's like a family vacation, but they are not family. Yeah, they're taking them to the beach. Little bad children, mm. evil little children. And it's funny because they were modeled in the movie to be, you know, like... Like children of that time. Yeah, they were modeled to be like exact replicas of how children, at least the creators, viewed children being at the time. So good job, Henry Selleck and Tim Burton. And didn't Danny Elfman play one of the voices of the kids? I, I want to say it was like Shock or Barrel or something. Oh, I can't remember. But um, Danny Elfman actually had to play um, two of the characters, including one of the children. And uh, he even did the singing voice for Jack Skellington because the voice actor that played him couldn't sing. So Danny Elfman actually sang all of Jack's songs. Oh yeah. Yes, he did. And he did a great job. The next one we have up, we actually got a few months ago when it came out. And I do have the card holder for it. It is really beautiful. Again, it is in a similar aesthetic where we have kind of this whole pastel goth theme just continued with the Nightmare Before Christmas merch uh, through Box Lunch. But we have these different varying shades of purple for each of the card holder flaps. And this is so awesome. This is Zero's doghouse, his crypt doghouse. And it's just beautifully styled. You know, you can see his um, skull and crossbones on the door and then this beautiful floral motif under. And I do like that they kept it like with the pink. They also kept the other colors of the swirly lines and the, um, the fence and the tree as black. So it really kept kind of the spooky atmosphere, even with all the beautiful colors. And then we have Zero! <laughs> Oh, he's so stinking cute. But yeah, again, I love these trees. I love the gates in that awesome Tim Burton aesthetic. And then we actually have embroidered flowers on the motif here. And it's in a beautiful purple and emerald green color. It's just fantastic. And especially they have this like burgundy moon with an ombre behind zero. Really beautiful. And that goes with this bag, which we will into. And this one is just a spooktacular delight. Oh. Oh, I love the blue flowers. Yes, they're so stunning. This is so special. I love this. Absolutely stunning set. Sally and Jack both look so amazingly happy just gazing into each other's eyes and eye sockets. 
and <laughs> fun fact yeah fun fact Disney actually wanted Jack to have eyes because they thought it was too menacing to have just hollowed out black sockets but Henry Selick and uh, Tim Burton got their way on that and held firm to the to the black and eye holes I feel like putting eyes in Jack's head would have been creepier oh yeah (laughs) I don't, that wouldn't have worked. Oh, really, oh, no. But just look at the expression here. I love the fact that they, with these flowers that they kind of went, steered away from the pink flowers that it, they had done on the other bag, which is awesome because like Ray said, it is really refreshing to get all of these beautiful deep blue. I'm not, I'm trying to, it's almost like the blue that you see on roses whenever you see a floral that has blue roses on it. It's that type of... Um, it's a very royal blue. Yeah. It's royal. Like, that's that's the queen's blue. <laughs> it's the queen's blue. But still a little muted. It's almost like a cornflower blue mixed with a royal mm-hmm. blue. You know that cornflower blue color? Yeah. I'm just so distracted because this like pink and purple going on is giving me mad Cheshire Cat vibes. Oh. <laughs> see, I see it's a... Uh, um, because of this dark purple right here Mm -hmm. that's more muted in like a deep deep plum and is kind of spooky with the spider webs it's really taking that kind of cheshire cat effect away for me but i do love how they have the spider web and creepy swirlies that go with the yeah all of tim burden's creepy swirlies you know what i'm talking about (laughs) but all of the spider webs and creepy swirlies lend itself to that tim burden-esque nightmare before christmas aesthetic But it looks like they're under a gazebo for their wedding day. Yeah. They're getting married. They're finally getting married. Now, there are side pockets. So those are really nice. And I do love this plaque. It's a beautiful plaque. Oh, my God. I love how it actually has the font from The Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah. Mm. And it, yeah, it's a very rich, deep, and muted plum beautiful but yeah there's nothing on the back nothing special there but that's okay the handle is nice silver though hand. silver uh, hardware it's really nice and rip that off and look at this print oh and look at this beautiful print now this print does kind of harken back to the bag that we just saw the canvas bag mm-hmm. um but instead of like on top of the cobalt color, we have it on top of this very light um, lavender, very light lilac actually, because it's closer to pink. But yeah, we have the bats again, the silhouettes of the bats and the gorgeous florals. And there's that um, cobalt color again. Oh, I just love the color story that they're using. It really is perfect and it goes so well with the effect that they're giving here. So there is an inside zipper there. So we're Just good to go. Well. This set is immaculate, beautiful set. Here's the next lounge fly bag that we have. And I am obsessed here. All of these fall colors, it's like a fall rainbow because they don't just stick to like the typical fall colors, but there's so many deep teals and forest and emerald greens that are mixed in with the magentas and oranges and everything. It's just spectacular. This is a completely different color story for Nightmare Before Christmas, but also whenever I first saw this released for um, pre-order, the the animation style got me. I've never seen um, the Nightmare Before Christmas characters done in an, a different animation style that I actually liked. <laughs> and this is super cute. It's almost making them chibi, but not. Like, mm-hmm. look how cute Zero is right here. Uh, they almost make his pumpkin nose look like a little sunflower. Oh, I know. <laughs> like he has like a Catholic halo behind him. <laughs> like just a little. <laughs> I will say with the magenta and the orange color tying in on this bag, it's giving the Nightmare Before Christmas a very warm tone. 
which is yeah. interesting because it, it's a very cool... If you look at the movie, there's a lot of cool colors being utilized, and a lot of the merchandise involves cool colors, so it's really nice to get these warm warm tones and like these more tropical bags. It's, it's really nice. It's very refreshing. Yeah, especially because a lot of these colors are in Sally's patchwork dress. Mm -hmm. So this that's another thing that I noticed is that we're getting a lot of the colors that Ray is mentioning we get in Sally's dress in the film. And so now it's just kind of splayed out all over in the design of this bag. It's really cool. I love all the different swirling motions that they're putting in here to kind of hint to the wind. And then you can even see like the leaves blowing in the wind. It's giving me a little bit of like a dark Halloween Colors of the Wind, Pocahontas vibe. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't have side pockets, but I don't care because this is gorgeous. These pumpkins, I love the artwork that they're doing here. Yes. That is, yeah, it's stunning. And the funny thing is too, is that it almost looks like it is an amalgamation of Christmas and Halloween because doesn't that kind of look like snow and sparkling snow? Yeah, it kind of looks like these pumpkins are in like a pumpkin patch that's covered in snow. So it's really, it's really pretty. It's really nice and a unique play on the night before Christmas. And this is awesome because we do actually get uh, like a traditional Halloween plaque. Mm -hmm. So it's a deep black Tim Burton's The Nightmare Before Christmas lounge fly plaque on the side. But then on the black leather behind it, they have the orange stitching. I love that. They've also used orange and black as the accessorizing colors, which really helps lend and pack that Halloween punch that we expect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. Especially with like the black metallic zipper too just gives it that extra Halloween edge to it. Yeah, it's almost like a charcoal gray, Yeah, but it does look black and kind of when it's next to all of the other black mm -hmm. elements. But yeah, I love that they did the straps in the orange nylon here. It's awesome because I love the Halloween aesthetic, but I don't like it to be too campy or too in your face and really just all the other elements that they have in the color story for this bag help just bring everything into a cohesive unity. It just all harmonizes. <laughs> it's, it's, it's working for me. And I think this is really special because yeah, they really are merging, you know, the whole Christmas and Halloween elements here because even though at the end of this, at the end of the movie, the whole spiral mountain is mm -hmm. engulfed in snow. It's, but, it's all white. But here we do get like the spooky Halloween vibe of it, but then they do show like the ice crystals and icicles coming off of it. And then more of the snow elements down here. Regardless if this is intentional or otherwise, can we just look at the fact that Zero's head and the mountain make a heart? Oh, they do. Just, just so everyone knows. Don't That's know if hard. it's intentional, but it's a thing. I think I, that has to be. But look how cute Jack and Sally look. Oh, and I love the little stars up there. Or like, I guess that might be like snow falling. Yeah, that's uh, definitely snow falling mm -hmm. here. And then the beautiful moon silhouette behind them both. It's absolutely iconic and wonderful. And it just captures the magic of that ending scene. We actually watched it tonight. And when he's coming up the mountain to Sally and starts singing about how they are going to end up together forever, it just, uh, it broke me down. <laughs> it broke me down. They're so sweet. And you know what? Another little fun fact that we can throw in here. Um, on this bag, Jack, and actually on the previous, uh, on the canvas bag as well, Jack has a full black suit which was his original costume design. They actually changed it for the film after doing a couple of test shots because his all black suit blended in with the all black um, town. Yeah, so he, all the dark was, elements like, of Halloween the town. Time. So they, uh, they added, I believe Henry Selleck is the one who decided to add the pinstripes to his suit, which are now iconic to Jack Skellington. <laughs> I really do think that this one is my favorite of them all. 
look at this beautiful one. They went above and beyond on this one. Like we literally get beautiful Jack and Sally right on the inside with zero. That is a phenomenal lining. Yeah, this bag is really special because the designer is just all over. It's inside, it's on the side of the bag, on the back of the bag. That same metal for the zipper inside, it's really nice. But yeah, just such a beautiful all over print inside this bag. And then this is the last bag we have to show y'all. It's actually the most recent too. It's still up on Box Lunch's website. Um, you can still go in store and get it as well. But this one is very endearing and so cute. We actually have Jack looking straight on um, at us breaking the fourth wall mm -hmm. uh, versus all the other bags where they're kind of looking at each other. I do love how Sally is holding her um... I guess it's a flower. It's, it's like Her a little wilted flower. flower that she picks up and then she has the, the premonition about Christmas failing. Oh yeah, because it catches on uh, fire. It turns, it turns into a Christmas tree and then catches <laughs> on the Girl, that's a serious premonition. Like, And she also has this flower at the end because right before she climbs up the snow-covered mm -hmm. mountain, she grabs one to she pick off the petals. And, Does he love me? He loves me, yes. He loves me not. This is such a dreamy, whimsical, pastel goth bag. I, I'm in love with it. The beautiful colors, starting with this like robin's egg blue into this deeper um, cobalt color, going up into a lavender and then into this like lilac up here. Mm -hmm. It's almost a pink actually. It, it's so stunning. And then we have clouds, we have the moon, a little bat silhouetted figure right there again. <laughs> it, it's really whimsical and charming. I love this zipper pull. That zipper yeah. pull is so cute with the heart with the skull in it. And it looks like it has a, uh, a keyhole. Right? Or is that just a little shine? Like yeah, little oh yeah, shine. that's like a highlight for okay. the shine. But it's still super cute. But yeah, I love that they have the little black heart with the skull on it. And it's a lavender skull too. Mm -hmm. And then even inside the zipper here, we have like a deep green. And I love that because they, they've really thought about the ways that they can add in the deeper colors in order to set off the sweetness of the pastel colors. And I do like that they have these like comic book explosion yeah. <laughs> symbols down I, here. I was just thinking, I was like, what are these sparkles supposed to be? They're really cute, but I'm, I'm a little lost on what the sparkles are, but I'm here for it. I do think it's interesting that with all of these bags with Sally, like kind of the faces, they're trying to stay true, but still somehow managing to be different. I really like this one. Mm -hmm. I think she's beautiful with her big eyes. And then just kind of compare. Yeah, just ever so slightly different animation styles. And but they still look like they belong to the same mm -hmm. collection. I don't know if that's it's like the same artist drew them all. Yeah, and these two especially, like, these are the same aesthetic. Like, this is very cohesive. You can tell with the florals and just the tropical spring vibes. And this kind of has that, but this is giving me more of a Betsy Johnson kind of flair <laughs> to it. It's just the color story is very similar to the others. I don't know, the side pockets are giving me Beetlejuice. Well, that, that, that's the Betsy Johnson, too. <laughs> that's the same thing. <laughs> but, yeah, the side pockets are definitely giving that Beetlejuice uh, flair with the stripes. And I really like it because, you know, these actually aren't black and white stripes. It's kind of like a deep, dark like purple. Extremely, yeah. It's like the most charcoal purple you could get without it being gray or black. Yeah, and then you get those um, comic book explosions and stars. <laughs> I want a print bag just like this. But then they also have these little like designs with these circles going down, which looks really cool. I like that they did that. Here on the zipper, we have again that deep forest hunter green to help offset that sweetness of the other colors. Yep, and same thing for this side pocket. And then 
On the back, there's not much except we get zero. So yeah, we get another zero right centered at the top of the bag. And then there's actually clouds and stars on the straps. Which yeah. is super cute. I love when they add a little something special to the straps. It's a very nice touch. And it's really awesome because it reminds me of that part where Jack is singing like, what have I done? What have I done? And he's feeling, mm -hmm. he's having a pity party. Then he was like, well, at least for a moment I touched the sky. And it's just, it's a feel good time. Uh, after he realizes, you know what? He tried his best. So. That's beautiful. I really love that. I could not pass up this bag when I saw it. Thought it would go beautifully with all the other ones we have. And then there actually is not a lining in this one. Shocker. You know, I'm a little disappointed in that. I'm I'm kind of used to Disney and Lone Fly having always a, having a, a lining. lining. It, I mean, if if not just like a basic lining, like stripes or polka dots. Yeah, I mean, really, really good about doing that. They did but... give it in a purple that matches the rest, mm -hmm. so that's cool. These gals are not Nightmare Before Christmas, we know, but we had to give Emily her little moment. You know, this is all in honor of um, Halloween night, so we're not gonna have another opportunity to give her a moment in the light. We don't so discriminate speak. on our ghouls here. <laughs> no discrimination of ghouls, so our girls and our ghouls will see the light of day. I love Emily. I love her character in Corpse Bride. We both do. And yeah, we thought we'd show her a little bit of love here. We got these Funko Pops. Um, first off, I got this one a while back and it was the first one released. And it's absolutely stunning. This is one of my favorite Funko Pops. I love how they did her eyes in white. I think it's just remarkable. Her makeup looks great, the purple lips, and her dress is giving me, uh, it's giving me like Ariel's wedding dress vibes. <laughs> and it's just stunning. And they even have her in heels, but you know, you can see one of them has like a sock, a stocking down, and she just has her um, skeleton leg, while the other one, she actually has her blue skin. I'm trying to like hint, show it. But I don't want to debox, even though I do have another Emily. She is different, so I would, but I. Ain't. <laughs> I love the texturing they gave in the hair. It is beautiful. With all of those little, like lines to show the swirls and the different parts. And they do have actually her tattered and like ripped up um, veil that's going across in the back of her head. Hot Topic this year released an exclusive. Emily and I had to get this one and it was so hard to get because literally they sold out everywhere they sold out online instantly none of the hot topics around us had it in stock for more than a few seconds <laughs> so it was really bad but I got her off of eBay I did what I had to do <laughs> but isn't it awesome she literally has the worm coming out of her eye and he has these beautiful, awesome Funko eyes too. Like even the painting they did on the worm coming out of her eye is amazing. Yeah, I love that it's like this pastel yellow for his eyes and his teeth with like magenta on his lips and surrounding his eyes. Just awesome, awesome detail. And she is a diamond collection exclusive. So she has beautiful glittering details in her hair and actually her veil if you notice, like this Emily's veil is translucent and blue and just kind of more undead, whereas this one is shimmering and glittering and white. But other than that, like they're pretty much the same. I think there's also glittering details in her dress and in her bouquet of flowers. We had just been wanting to show Emily some love and we've had been sit we've been sitting on these two for a while now, but definitely thought it was an appropriate time uh, on Halloween during our Nightmare Before Christmas haul to go ahead and give them the moment. All right, last and of course not least is our Jack and Sally Jim Shore piece. And I, it was released this year. We got it at Box Lunch 
in store. Because we have one now. Because we have one ah. now, Austin. <laughs> but this one is so gorgeous. Like, literally, it was like in September. They only had one left. And we were both like, why not? Like, especially like how it gets overwhelming sometimes to during this time of year to keep having to redecorate for different holidays and oh stuff. My God. But if any of them are worth it, it's definitely going to be Christmas or Halloween. <laughs> and we didn't go crazy with Halloween this year, but this is one that um, we've been waiting to show it, so we haven't had it on display. This one is perfect. It is so perfect. Oh, look at them. So beautiful. This is the Jim Shore. It is lovely, lovely, lovely. I am obsessed with the amount of detail that they put into Sally and into her gown, mm -hmm. well, into Sally's dress. It's all the colors that we're used to seeing and patterns, but with a typical Jim Shore styling and stylization yeah. to it. Because we do have those like the rose mauling details that he puts. But also this isn't exactly how her dress was. I think it might've been more checkered. But it's just really cool how he mixed it up. And mm -hmm. here's like the mustard pieces. But it's fantastic. And you can see all of the stitching details on Sally. And one thing that I think is very awesome is just the beautiful pose. It's such a like a dancer pose that they are in. What do you think about it, babe? That's very true. They do they do look like they're almost dancing. Um, <clears throat> Dancing in the moonlight. For some reason, this is giving me, okay. For some reason, the pose that they're in is giving me very, like, Howl's Moving Castle, Howl and Sophie flying through the air. Aww. It's so cute. But, um... I and just, look at the, just the molding that they have here with Jack's hand across Sally's waist and then Sally's right on top of his. Like, it doesn't look chunky at all. It looks just gorgeous. It It's so well thought out and so magnificently done. <laughs> we definitely did not pass on this piece, could not pass on this piece, and we just need to find a good place for it. Because mm -hmm. I don't think it's one that we'll just bring out for Halloween. And oh, for sure. Well, especially because it's the nightmare before Christmas. We can put it up on Halloween and have it out until after Christmas. Yeah. And we are very particular with our gym shores and just like the ones that we choose mm -hmm. to buy. I think the base on this is fantastic. You know, we have mm -hmm. those spirals and then also this beautiful lilac color that we see on a lot of the bags actually. And then that ombre's down into this deeper blue color. Mm -hmm. I and definitely love that ombre. And the top is this beautiful navy blue. Mm -hmm. And I know a number of Jim Shores do have this moon uh, feature behind them, but it's, you know, extremely pertinent to Jack and Sally just because the moon is always there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, hugging whatever character is on the spiral mountain. So this is just a beautiful piece overall. I, I love all the detail that goes into Sally's dress in particular, as well as her stitching. And we even do get the pinstripe effect on Jack's pencil thin limbs. Those are extremely thin. Yeah, the proportions are great. Mm -hmm. Like it looks so movie accurate and that's something that I do love. In, I do think that they could have painted inside of the pinstripes just to give it more of an accurate effect, but I'm glad that we still have the indentations for the pinstripes. But I think the proportions are remarkable. Um, it is. It looks exactly like Jack Skellington and this looks so much like Sally. Thank you all for watching and making it through this whole video and just going over all of our beautiful Nightmare Before Christmas um, collection. I mean, it is mostly bags, but you know, <laughs> whatever. Uh, definitely, um, I don't know why, but I just haven't gotten into the Funko Pops of any of the Nightmare Before Christmas characters. I, I love Funko Pops, um, you know, just, but for some- a little odd. 
Yeah, I don't know why. It just, um, but yeah, we did show Emily. We gave Emily her little glittering moment. So there's the little Funko Pop fix. But we, it is an ever expanding collection. But I think uh, one thing with Nightmare Before Christmas is that we do like to get items that aren't the typical aesthetic for Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah. And so these have just really drawn our eyes and captivated us. But, you know, it is Halloween. This is going to go up after Halloween. So uh, maybe a little mismanagement of the time. But, you know, it's still, it's going to be spooky season. All the way up to December. The nightmare isn't over, honey. <laughs> the nightmare is going. May the nightmare comes. I mean, we do still have another pumpkin to carve. We do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're real late. Yeah. on everything in life. We did get a cute pumpkin out, though. We kind of made him, gave him a little Funko like Pop Funko face. Pop -up. It's, it's a thing. Uh, we digress. <laughs> we hope everyone had a happy and safe Halloween, an amazing All Hallows Eve. And yeah, thank you for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Help support our channel. And until next time, bye. Bye.